This is episode one of my Skyblock Survival Let's Play series, and I am excited to do this. I have been really busy, getting a lot of work done, as you can see. I think I'll start this episode by showing you around with what I've done, but first of all, I'm going to explain what my goal in this series is, which is not to follow the rules of Skyblock, the um, goals of Skyblock. I'm going to completely ignore those. Instead, I've gave myself my own rule. Um, challenge. That's what they are. And that is just to get as many different items in this skyblock as I can. And for now I'm starting these in this chest. This is actually where the original island was. I've converted it into kind of a storage area and I'm trying to get a peaceful mob to spawn here. That's why I have this grass platform. But yeah, and I'll probably decorate this better and stuff later. All this stuff may have cobblestones. It's all temporary for now. So I'll just show you what I've got so far. Just a quick look. You can pause the video if you wish, but that, that was my wool. This is food and wood stuff. Smooth stone, miscellaneous, armor tools, discs, mod drops, potions, whatever. Alright, let's get started showing you around then. Here I got a tree farm. Just a basic one. As I said, it's temporary because it's on cobblestone. I'll build probably a bigger one with more spots for trees later and probably some auto harvesting of the sapling feature thing. Something we'll see. As in like water things to catch the saplings. My storage system out here. Got a farm. Grow all the different fun stuff. It's my only pumpkin plant, the rest of millions, and that's my source of food. This gold block was actually accidental. I Put it down because I excited I had one to admire it, so I put it down. Realized I couldn't pick it back up with a stone pickaxe, so I would just get rid of it. I need an iron one. So that'll be there until I find an iron pickaxe. This is where I've been doing my fishing to get... I had a name tag in that one of those chests and some other stuff like that. Over there, I think it's kind of funny, but I've noticed a bunch of squids were falling there. I needed some ink sacks for those chests. So I just built a little ring over there to get a couple ink sacks. That was my goal, but I've actually been getting stacks from this thing. All you do is come down here and collect them, and you get lots. Oh, and if you hear that, that's the sound of villagers. I do have a couple, and you probably saw that from my preview to this uh, LP also. Yeah, got some villagers. Hi, guys. You don't want to say hi. Uh, here's my mob farm, and it's this is also something I designed myself for this skyblock world. It can get all types of mobs, and most of them will be down to one heart left when they fall. Sometimes they die, I don't know why. But yeah, most of the time they get down to one heart. Yeah, that's this. And you can punch in the death, get some of those rare drops. I've been storing all that stuff. And these chests here. Got some witch drops too and stuff. That, that was my iron. I did have a couple more, but I used them. Got some other stuff here. Oh. <laughs> that's not supposed to be there. That's really something. Else. Oh. Some healing potions for the witches. Armor and tools. Music discs. Yeah. All that stuff. That's that. I'll now bring you to the top of this, but I need to disable it first, since that usually takes a while. And it's disabled! So I, we can go up there now. The way I have to disable it, since I really don't have any redstone or redstone maps or anything, is I gotta go in there and kill all the mobs and then torch it up. Which can be kind of hard when there's creepers in there, but got it done. And this is really it. I've built one floor to it. It is expandable upwards, and I started building a second floor, but never really got finished with that. And this is how it works. It does work with some tricks with the mob AI, and you can see a little link in the video description or on the screen to a video that talks more about it, but what happens when a mob wants to decide where to go is it picks a location away from it then it tries any way possible to get, either get to it or get as close as it can. So that's what this room is set up to work with. 
And also another trick that lots of mob traps uses is mobs think trap doors are normal ground, so they'll walk across like I'm doing now. Except they aren't, and they'll fall down. So what happens is, say a creeper spawns here, and then it picks a location maybe out there. Well, it'll just go against the wall and that's it. If it picks a location in that side of the room, or past, then it's going to try to get over there, treats the trapdoors like ground, and walks across them. It is possible for it to just barely go across the edge, but most likely, it'll fall down in the process while trying to get to this side of the room. And that's how it works. All the different creatures that will spawn in here will just naturally walk into the center. I couldn't use things like water. There are endermen I'm trying to capture in here, so I can't just push them to the center. And you have to set up some sort of redstone thing to turn that on and off. Uh, I think that's it, unless I'm forgetting something. This here, this is just optional. It's my way to get up and down a little ladder room thing. And this is a little trap so that I can be over here next to the door. And they'll fall into this little hole trying to get to me. And it'll just kind of help me attack them from behind the door. This is the beginnings of the second floor. And yeah, I'm in an extreme hill spine, so I do get snow. So someday I'll build a snow golem with that. I guess I could talk a little bit about lighting. So normally this is blocked off until I build the second floor at least to keep light from coming in. I have this extra little tube going down to keep light from coming in, skylight from coming in from outside. So this block has zero lighting. You can see if you push F3, there's uh, under the XYZF thing, there's uh, the LC. To the right of that, it says BL. That stands for block light. That's how much light's coming from torches. That is normally zero if there's no torches out there. I guess I might as well disable it. I mean, enable it again in front of you guys. But there's absolutely no light in here. Everything's zero coming from. And there's also the SL. That's skylight, light from the sky. And then the RL is the sum of the both. So everywhere, it's zero over here because the torches shine through there. And torches shine through doors, that's why it's light out there. There you go. And so that, I will, it's better to have um, moth spawn and light level 7 or less, but they're more likely to spawn in light level 0, so that's why it's keeping this all 0, and that's why this is a slab and stuff. That's really all there is to it. pad there is actually in the exact location as if you were to recreate the seed and go there in the nether that would be a nether fortress and it turns out that the way the nether was made is they pretty much just deleted all the blocks but the area that the nether fortress is there is still there if you get what I mean so the nether fortress mobs will still spawn even though the, all the blocks for the nether fortress are gone there are a couple differences between this design and the other one I made it four rooms instead of two so it's more likely for them to walk out. Also put little blocks in the middle to keep big magma cubes from spawning because I found those uh, keep the mobs from going falling down. At least I think they are. Do. they? Because they're not able to fall down themselves. They're too big. Also when I originally built it the ground was built out of half slabs. Don't do that. Turns out all the mobs seem to just kind of leak right through that and attack you. So now that's full of ground and it haven't seen a mob leak since then. Well this is it. Punch it just the same. If I need to collect loot more towards the center, that's what that's there for. I can also go around the edges. I also made a little punching thing here. The this was supposed to be temporary, but I've kept it there. It helps access the blazes that like to hide in the back. 
Oh, in fact, there is something I forgot with the other farm to show you. And I enabled it, so it'll be hard. But that's my farm in the nether. I do plan on putting like storage chests here. Right now I just have some extra gold swords. I'm scared the blades can kill me. You're up, they got me. I'm going down. If you notice, the staircase goes downwards. Now, that's a little bit hard to do in the nether in a skyblock world. If you think about it, normally when you want to build downwards in midair, you use a water bucket, but that doesn't work too well. I was able to think of three different ways. One being jump off and while falling, put down a block to build downwards. And I started that for the first 10 things I needed to go down and then gave up on that. The second option was to build a piston. I got the iron from killing a zombie for that. Uh, I accidentally dropped one of them in a void, so I had to go through two. The third way would be using a fire resist potion, which you can get from witches if you kill them while they're drinking that, which is I haven't done because I haven't burnt any. And then you can use a lava bucket instead of water bucket. So I guess now I'll show you the thing I forgot. I did use a little bit of mob AI in the falling zone. It looks like nothing's here yet. I'm just kind of scared to do this because the creeper falls down. Oh, I just heard creeper. It'll blow up if I'm too close. But basically, I use carpets here. They think that carpets are normal blocks, so they want to, if they want to go anywhere that's outside of this room when they're choosing a location to walk to, they'll have to go through here, down this trapdoor, onto that block, and then wherever they want to go. And really, like that block over there is farther away than inside the building. There's a whole ring around it, so any direction they want to go. They gotta go through this first, and they think they can, so they go up right next to the edge and try jumping up and through this carpet, but they can't. And I actually had it blow up on me once when I was playing around up there, so I'm not gonna get any closer. Over there is where the sand island used to be. I turned it into a giant mushroom growing place. And up here, this is my AFK spot. I'm trying to get peaceful mods to spawn over there, and from what I read online, this is the perfect distance away to make that happen. It's worked in my test world, but I haven't had any luck here yet, so I guess I just need to case some more. Oh, forgot about that. This came from that. That is my automatic cactus farm. I needed a few cactuses, and so I thought that's what I would do. I think that's everything. So I guess now we can go on to my next project, which is to build this but much bigger and nicer looking. This is a cobblestone farm I designed specifically for Skyblock, because cobblestone farms I find, I mean, the most simple one you build first is really annoying to use, because you have to wait forever for the cobblestone to regenerate. But with this, look at that, lots of cobblestone. So this is what I've been using to build everything out of. Basically, you pour down lava and then you pour down water, makes a bunch of cobblestone. I'm calling this farmer the Cobble Falls, as you can see from the title of this episode. That's what this is. Um, this episode, I would like to make a bigger and more automated version of this. And as I get redstone and stuff, I'll probably make it even more automated. And I guess that's that. I do not have enough cobblestone at the moment to build this, so I'll start out with doing a lot of mining. I was hoping to build most of it on camera, but it's like, I don't get to see the first part. But basically, what I'm doing is building that cobblestone generator over there. Over here, 
with a couple differences more automated. I want it to be five blocks wide to the seven to match with the path up to it. And yeah, I already got it started here. So this is pretty much how I want to go. Um, I haven't put in the left side to this yet, but this is how it's going to look. I did put stairs in here instead of blocks, so you don't have to jump up to get to the next layer. I have it big enough so that doing a full harvest will give you, if I did my math right, five stacks of cobblestone, which is pretty good. And I also wanted to set it up in a way so that you're mining from the bottom. If you saw on that side, you went in the back side and then went down. This thing's infinitely expandable. So I set that up so I could just keep expanding it down because it's harder to expand the other way. But since I don't really plan on expanding it, this pretty preferable height. And since it's, I'm probably not harvesting it all at once ever, I would like to just be able to walk up to wherever I left off harvesting last time and continue off there. I guess I'll continue building. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a confession to make. I wanted to build that stone generator on camera a lot and show you progress updates and stuff, but I got a little carried away. I'm sorry. So, on the good news, I got a lot done. There it is. Oh, and if you notice, know lava's gone. That's where it went. Yeah. But there's still more work to be done, so I can still do stuff on camera. But that is what it's looking like right now. It is functional. I did harvest a load, but I guess I'll show you it in action now and tell you a little bit about it. So, <laughs> it's kind of dangerous to go up here. I'll probably take something better for it. Oops. Broke the torch. <laughs> Oh, those torches are all temporary. I wasn't sure how I wanted to light this. Thought I would just put something there for now. And I'll move them later. Oh, it is really hard to get up here. With one side water pushing you and the other side lava's burn you. But we can do it. So, some of the things, features of this. One, this water current isn't just decoration. It's a going to be a feature. Probably put way too many slabs in here than needed. But the idea is, with when I, whenever I was harvesting on the cobble farm over there, I would constantly be going to the furnaces and sticking my cobblestone into the furnace and then continue harvesting because I wanted by the time I was done harvesting to have tons of smooth stone to work with. And you saw me doing that in the montage. The idea, I want to keep that idea here also. But it's not like I can easily walk all the way up and down and up and down to access a furnace every couple stacks. So, the idea here, which I'm not going to implement right now, because I don't have the resources, but I just want to toss in the cobblestone, just chop down, and then the water will carry it to some hopper and it will auto furnace it for me. So then, by the time I'm done harvesting, there will be tons of smooth stone right there ready for me. So the pistons I use to make the path in the nether go down, piston, I put that here also. This is what I'm going to be using to control the lava and water compared to the other method. I have two of them here, so I had to go and make another and waste my precious iron. It's kind of hard to see this one, but yeah, there, so if I want to cut off the lava, these go like that, and then the lava will go away. And same for the water, if I want to make the water flow, I just switch the piston and it'll work. Which I will do in a moment, when I'm done talking about this. Actually, what I really want to do is... Did it! Didn't have anything good, valuable on good. Alright, so now, let's go ahead and make a bunch of cobblestone. Later, I would like to implement a button down there when I get tons of redstone and stuff, but put a button down there where I can just push the button, the wall will flow down by itself, and then some timing thing will go off, and the water will go off. I actually played around with this a little bit. I found out it is very hard to do any sort of timer thing without a comparator. 
because I can't get nether quartz, as far as I know. So we'll see what I can do about that. And now, we've got five stacks of cobblestone, ready to be harvested. Isn't that nice? So, what still needs to be done? So I do need to work on this outer thing a little bit. I keep adjusting it when I keep finding out that I've been doing it wrong. And so there's a lot more slabs in here than probably is required. But yeah, I need to make this outer rim the same as this inner thing, if you know what I mean. And I gotta find a better way to light this up. Oh, actually, I was thinking for lighting. I want to use glowstone all over the place. And I do have some, probably not enough. So that's going to be one of the things that will have to be done when I get the glowstone farm going in some later episode. Anyways, let's work on the outer rims. <laughs> Well, that's done. I'm sure... Oh, it's not done. There we go. So I'm sure that it's lopsided and then missing blocks all over the place, obviously. But hopefully nothing will be noticeable. I probably won't ever notice anything. I'm mainly talking about like on the underside. It's probably weird screw-ups with it, so it's not a perfect pattern, but oh well. So now, I want to add lights, but there's a bunch of calls on the way, so I'll, I'm going to have to mine it all. I'm going to get started on that. Well, that wasn't exactly five stacks of cobblestone. I obviously did my math wrong somewhere. Oh well. Still plenty. Not that big of a deal. Now I need to install the lights. I got the lights in, and I used the glowstone from the nether island. There's about, I think, 27 glowstone blocks there, and then of course, while breaking them, you lose some. And for the rest, here I put torches. And I'll probably just replace those with glowstone when I get more. But for now, it's torches. As for other news, I have recently updated Minecraft 1.7.4. And if you know about that update, they have added zombies riding chickens. And that's a rare version of a zombie that can spawn. By version, I mean there's a chance that a zombie will just be this instead of a zombie. Now, I haven't had any luck with this little island spawning any chickens or any other mob, but I did get a little luck over here. While harvesting over here, I collected an egg. And then later, oh, I just heard an egg pop. Later, I saw a chicken. So that is pretty exciting. But now I need to get that chicken out of there. I can't even see him. And hopefully, I don't kill the chicken in the process. So let's work on doing that. Oh! What do you know the chicken is out? I thought I was gonna have to go up there and disable it and try to burn the zombies from above and stuff, but it looks like the chicken just walked out. I didn't even think about that. I do have seeds. Let's go get some seeds. Oh, this is exciting. Ooh, I don't think I'll be eating melons much longer. By next episode, you'll see me in some sort of chicken farm or something. Alright. Got ourselves a chicken. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, that's a good chicken. Yeah. Feast tonight. Not really. 
We're just gonna set him in a little pan and let him lay eggs for a while. We can put him maybe right here. Hopefully he can't glitch through that fence walls, just to make sure. We got ourselves a chicken! And he will lay us some yummy eggs. Yeah! Next up, let us tear down the old cobble farm. Looks like it takes about a stack and a half cobblestone and probably a ton more slabs, most of them fill in the void, to make this thing, but now it's gone. There's one more thing I wish to do. Now, I saw Seth Bling do this, thought it was interesting, never tried it before, and no, might as well. Oh. Oh. Oh well. Thanks for watching. Hey, you. Yes, you. I need your help. So. I have this craving for blocks. I need as many as I can get my hands on. But 172 is not enough. So that's where you come in. In the video description below, there is a link to a list of all the blocks I have not yet obtained. If you have any idea as to how to get any of these blocks, go ahead and write so in the comments below. So, do you think you're up for the challenge?